everyone in church. Let's be on our feet for liberty prayer. As we all know that as a Christian, it's expected of us to give thanks to God in everything, whether good or bad. First Thessalonians 5.18, it is expected of us as a Christian to give thanks to God. But when we begin to live a life void of thankfulness, we begin to become self-centered. We begin to become arrogant. We are nothing without God. Everything that we have, that we have, it is given to us by him. I don't know. Every one of us standing here have something to be thankful for. Think, think deeply. Ponder on it. Just give thanks to God. Just appreciate God. Say a big thank you to him for everything that he has done for you. The things that you can see. The things that you cannot see. Things that he has averted for you. Things that he's working work in progress, everything that God has done for you, about your marriage, about yourself, your individual, your family, your aspiration in life. There is nothing, absolutely nothing you can do without God. Brethren, let's begin to appreciate God for who he is, for all he has been doing for us, even in this church. Let's thank him because he's a God that has been existing from time immemorial. There is nothing that can change him. Let's just begin to appreciate it. Ponder, think about everything. What you have, what you have today, is all about God. Let's appreciate God. Let's say a big thank you to Him. From the bosom of our heart, from the deep part of our heart, let's say thank you to Him. Let's appreciate Him. Let's say a big thank you to Him. Even as a church, where we are today, some people are out there. And one thing that God has given to us freely is choice. You can decide not to be in church today. You can decide to do whatever with your life. But be thankful to God that God has brought you here. There is a reason that you are here today. Thank God. Think deeply and say thank him to him. A big thank him to him for things that you cannot see. Things that you can see. Things that you have advocated. Things that he has in place for you. Appreciate him. Say a big thank him to him from the bosom of, a, of your heart. Nobody is going to thank God for you. Thank God by yourself. For every heart that is willing to pray, there is a God that is willing to answer. You know that. Every heart that is willing to pray, there is a God that is willing to answer. Brethren, let's open our mouth. Let's say thank you to God. Even for the discipleship center, let's say thank you. Maybe, you know, we have a few weeks left in August. Four months left for the rest of this year. You cannot remember when we're stepping into 2022. We are almost going to 2023. Four months left. Let's just appreciate God. It has just been God. If not for God, it's only God. Let's say a big thank you to God because God has been so good. Father, we worship you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for everything that you are doing for all. As an individual, even as a church, we have come to render our thanksgiving unto you this morning. Let our thanksgiving be accepted, O oh Lord. Father, we worship your majesty. We stand in all of your holy name. This morning, we are entering your presence with thanksgiving in our heart. We are absolutely nothing without you, God. From the bosom of our heart, we say a big thank you to you. Even every moment of our days on earth cannot count our blessing. Cannot say thank you enough for you. But we say thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Thank you for the things that we can see. The things that we cannot see. We appreciate you. We say thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Secondly, for every heart that is willing to pray, there is a God that is willing to answer. So brethren, open your mouth and tell it to God yourself. Whatever you want God to do for you. There is a God that is willing to answer. If you have a heart that is willing to pray, tell it to God this morning. God is present with us here this morning. Tell it to God. Open your mouth by yourself and tell it to God. God is here. He's listening. He's listening. Tell it to God. mouth bread and say to God, God is here. There is a heart, oh Lord, if your heart is willing to pray, God is willing to answer, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. A 
Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you to you once again. We appreciate you for who you are. It has been you. If not for you, it's only you, God. Father, we pray that will be speedy answer to our prayer this morning in the name of Jesus. And the church say...
tell him, tell him Lord have your way, have your way. we can't move without you there is nothing we can do absolutely nothing we can do without you have your way oh God Say, Jesus is the reason why I'm singing. Tell him again that Jesus is the reason why I'm standing here today. Say, if you don't believe that, tell them, if you don't believe that, you better believe right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we're going to sing this song, very simple song. And I want to teach it to you guys too so that you can join us to sing real simple. Amen. So how excellent is your name, your son. You reign victoriously. You build your throne in a heart recite. We hail your majesty. How excellent is your name.
tell him, say, tell him to worship you. I leave, I leave to worship you. One more time, let's declare it. Oh, to worship you, I leave. Let the Father hear you. You don't know how that sounds in his ear. Deception Center. Oh, make that your declaration to worship you, I need. To worship you, I need. To worship you, I need. No reason. No reason. 
go ahead and, and worship him this morning. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Appreciate him for his good and his mercy and just for heaven. He is the God of faithfulness without injustice. Our help in ages past over the years to come. Rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Invincible, immortal, the only wise God. Scripture says there is no God like the God of Jeshurun who rises across the heavens to help. Lord, we give you praise for you are the glory and the lift of our heads. We bless you. We appreciate you, O oh God, for the privilege of access into your presence, O oh God. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Scripture says, Blessed is the man that you have caused to approach you because you will fill him with the goodness of your house. Father, we bless your name this day. We give you praise. We give you glory. You are the reason why we're here. You are the reason we are standing here. You are the reason for the lifting of our hands. You are the reason for our rejoicing. You are the reason for the hope that we have. Even in the midst of the crisis that the world is going through, we give you praise because you are our anchor. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Gracious Father, we stand in awe of you this morning. We thank you so very much, Lord, for your help. Thank you for your grace. Apostle Paul said, I am what I am only by the grace of God. Having obtained help from the Lord until this day I stand. Lord, we are standing today because of your help, because of your mercy, and because of your grace. And so we ask you, O oh God, by your spirit, Lord, be kind to us this day. Do in each of our lives what only you can do, Heavenly Father. Please send your word and let there be light in the name of Jesus. So that in the brightness of your light, we can see the path that is ahead of us so that we will not walk in darkness. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. And you may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, help me reach out to the person on your left and on your right and say good morning this morning. Ask them how they're doing. Help me ask your neighbor, has the Lord been good to you? Of course, no, no doubt about that. It's because God has been good to you that you're here this morning. But the question is, have you been good to the Lord? What did you say? By the grace of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you what, it's always a joy to be in the house of the Lord. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I pray that the Lord will be gracious to us this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, I'm excited because uh, we're going to hear from, from God this morning. We're going to drink from a fountain that will not run dry. But before we do that, um, we have two families that I'll be asking to come for child dedication. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm sure you all know that we have entered that season. <coughs> so it's almost every week now. Uh, in fact, we did our name ceremony last, um, last, last week, and, uh, and there are a few uh, uh, name ceremonies that we're looking forward to uh, doing very, very, very shortly. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, can I ask the family of Mr. and Mrs. Uh, no Gain to please come? Let's appreciate them. Please, please come. Uh, you, you can stand and the, the choir will come up again and sing so that you can dance forward as you present uh, your child for dedication. And also the family of Mr. and Mrs. Ekuibe uh, to also stand and uh, dance forward to present the baby for dedication this morning. Okay. It's okay, you can, you, can, you can rise up and rejoice with them. Hallelujah. All right, over to you. Jesus, you are so
very powerful song. And of course, relevant to what we're doing today. Because I don't know where, I don't know, maybe you know a special store where they sell children. <laughs> Scripture says, the Bible says, children, I give from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward from him. Hallelujah. And so we're grateful to the Lord and we rejoice with you both in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, before we pray, uh, where's the microphone? Okay. All right, Brother Smith, please come. So, I'm trying to locate uh, uh, the senior. <laughs> okay, uh, from what I have here, um, a soldier uh, was born on the 29th of April, 2022. Um, I want to ask, what is the meaning of a uh, His first name is a soldier, uh, Matthew Enogai. Yeah, so, so it's what does it mean? It's, um, the gift of God. The gift of God. Praise the Lord. Come, let, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Okay. And then uh, Sharon Munachim Minso. Yeah, he will, he, he will correct me. Don't worry. It's, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, he will correct me. <laughs> Was born on the 2nd of May, 2022. So tell us what. Uh, the middle name, what it means, uh, and, 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 and tell us the, the correct pronunciation. Uh, Munachimso. Muna 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 Aha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Munachimso is a name and uh, meaning just me and God. Just me and God. Praise the Lord. Nothing in between. Just me and God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, church, please, I want you to stretch forth your hand and pray for Esosa and Sharon in the name of the Lord. Bless them in the name of the Lord. Hax that the hand of the Lord will come upon these ones. That the glory of the Lord will surround these ones. That a Sosa and Sharon will continue to grow in stature. We grow in grace. We grow in wisdom. Pray that no evil will befall this one. That as mountains surround Jerusalem, so the lost glory will surround this one. That these ones we know the Lord very early in life. This is their first day in the assembly of God's people, the church. This local assembly, that in the name of Jesus the Christ, these ones will not depart from the Lord. Bless their parents that God will continue to give them wisdom, the patience, the grace, resources that they need to nurture them and bring them up in the way of the Lord. Pray that their joy will not turn to sorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. Please, uh, let, let them face me. Praise the Lord. So, in the name of God the Father, amen. the Son, amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, sir, we dedicate you to the Lord. From this day, you are the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sharon, we dedicate you to the Lord. From this day, you are the Lord's in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Heavenly Father, we want to bless your holy name. 
We thank you for the wisdom that you have given to the parents of these amazing children, Esosa and Sharon, to bring to you the gift that they have received from you. No one can keep like you. You are the keeper of your people. And whatsoever is committed into your hands, Heavenly Father, you are able to keep. And so we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, that in keeping you, we keep this once in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the seed of a man who fears the Lord shall be mighty upon the earth, shall be successful everywhere. A saucer, Sharon, may you become mighty in the hands of God in the name of Jesus. May the mighty one do in each of your heart what no man can do in the name of Jesus Christ. You have stepped into the house of the Lord this day and we declare by the word of the Lord and by the spirit of the living God, you will never depart from the Lord in the name of Jesus. When you come to the age of accountability, age where you know how to make decisions, I pray that by the spirit of the living God, you will choose Jesus. Amen. You will know him personally. Amen. You will know him intimately. Amen. You will know him progressively. Amen. You will know him experientially. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says the beloved of the Lord will dwell in safety. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. In righteousness you will be established. May the Lord cause his light to shine in your heart. And through you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the brightness of his light you will see the path that is ahead of you. You will not walk in darkness. You will not follow multitude to do evil. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of these last days, of this age, will not possess you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You shall walk strong in the spirit. Amen. You will grow in grace. Amen. The Lord will strengthen you. Amen. The Lord will multiply grace to you. Amen. The reason for your existence, you will know very early in life. Amen. The grace to step into destiny fulfillment, you will receive it. Amen. You will walk with the Lord Amen. till the end of the head in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Please bless these two families. May their joy be full. Help the parents, Heavenly Father. Lord, to nurture these ones in the way that you have chosen in the name of Jesus. We pray that by your grace they will not fail in Jesus' name. And Lord, as many people who are believing for a blessing like this, a gift like this, Heavenly Father, may their season of, of fulfillment of your good word come in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise and we give you all the glory. It is in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Amen. One more song and then they dance all back to their seat. Hallelujah. God bless you. Congratulations. 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 God bless you. God bless you. the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Um, uh, where's Pastor Michael? Okay, he's not here. Pastor Michael, we always say there's no time to waste time. So, <laughs> so we'll just go straight because uh, I don't know about you. I'm, I'm really, really ready to receive a word from the Lord. And it's such a joy to have with us this morning. Uh, those who are new to the church uh, would probably wouldn't know them, uh, but they're not strangers to us here. As a matter of fact, um, there are people we consider to uh, be um, uh, leader over this house, a mentor, and, uh, and I pray 
that the Lord will speak to you in a language plain and simple. Amen. Accent clear and still Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I, I, I want to advise you and encourage you, uh, please pay attention. Don't allow any distraction. I have a reason for saying that. Uh, because what, what you, uh, you are about to hear, if you drift for a second, you probably miss what the Lord is trying to communicate. Um, Dr. Guke is a teacher of the word of God. And, uh, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept. And, and if you are distracted, you, if you are not, if you didn't hear what, may, maybe something that was said before this thing that he's saying, and then you, you, you won't be able to connect the dot and then walk in that revelation of what the Lord is communicating. Uh, so I want you to please pay attention as we receive the word of the Lord. So in one minute, please, I want you to bow your heads in prayer. I want you to ask the Lord to speak to you. Ask him to speak to you. Ask him to speak to you. Ask him to send his word. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And so, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this worship day. Thank you for the privilege of worship. Thank you for the privilege of being in your presence. Many need this. All of us do need this. Any man on earth needs this. But how many do find their way to the place of your presence? Father, we do not take this for granted. We say thank you, Father. Thank you for mercy that found me. Thank you for mercy that found my brethren. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for bringing us here. Lord, you have started something in our lives this morning. Could sense your presence, could feel your presence, could touch it. It's just very palpable. Lord, the joy that is rising up in our hearts even this morning, it will be perpetual in the name of Jesus. Nothing will steal it from us in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, in your own mercy, you will, according to your word, you will follow us with your word. You will follow us with your mercy. You will follow us with your eyes. You will lead us, oh Lord. You will instruct us and teach us in the way which we shall go. You will guide us with your eyes. You will never leave nor forsake us. Lord, I'm praying that this morning, you will visit us with mercy and compassion. Wherever anything is hurting, oh, Father, the balm of Gilead will come into play in the name of Jesus. The joy that you've given us, oh, Lord, will be perpetual. Amen. Whatever seems to be a way that is difficult to fathom out, you are the one that makes the way in the wilderness. You make streams in the desert. Oh, there will be that living water, rivers of living water flowing out this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. You will meet us at the point of our needs. Jesus, you are the miracle. We will receive you. We will receive you even in another dimension. More and more of you, Lord Jesus, this morning in the name of Jesus. A fresh revelation of that place of victory. A fresh revelation of the cross of Jesus. A fresh revelation of the power and glory of resurrection in the name of Jesus. We will walk in it in the name of Jesus. Until that day, when we see you face to face in glory, we will continue to bath in the glory of your grace in the name of Jesus. You will do more than our asking. All of this to the praise of the glory of your grace. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for our fellowship this morning. Oh, do something tangible. Something that we will hold on to. And it will be perpetual in the name of Jesus. Now take all the glory, Father. 
Glory be to your name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Good morning. For those of us who have met and met in the past, um, it's nice again to be here with you. And it's always a joy. It's always deep joy to fellowship with you. And he has brought us to meet one another for a purpose. He will fulfill that purpose in the name of Jesus Christ. Now this morning, I just want us to again will remind us what we already know. That the miracle that happened to the world is Jesus Christ. There is no greater miracle. To touch him is to touch miracle. To connect with him is to connect with miracle. Whatever the de definition of miracle is, it is Jesus. You know there were some people, thousands of them, and he fed them. They ate fish, they ate bread. And they decided that a man like this must be the man that we are looking for. Israel has waited too long. Finally, he has come. So they wanted to make him king. And he escaped to the other side of the lake Genesaret. <laughs> now, these people were so touched that they decided to take shipping too. But by the time they got to the coast, the last boat has departed. So they slept by the seaside. Is that not zeal? If you and I saw them, wouldn't we say, oh, these people know the Lord and they love Jesus? I was surprised. When Jesus went, now they waited overnight. So the first boat the following morning, they took that boat. I think that story is told in John chapter 6. When you have time, please read it. That's not the subject. It's just to say, let's to lay that foundation that Jesus is the miracle we are looking for. Now, when they cross the, if it was me, I would say, wow, my ministry has finally arrived. People sleeping at the seaside. Overnight, taking the first boat, seeking for me. These are the, the, the these ones, they are real true followers. I was so surprised what he had to say to them. They say, Master, we have been looking for you. Ah. He said, You are looking for me. Not because you saw the miracles, but because you ate bread and fish. He said, Seek for that bread. That once you eat it, you hunger no more. We will eat of that bread this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, it is not what a man can do. It is what only God can do. And my prayer will be that he will reveal himself to our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. If I was to title our discussion this morning, I would have said, he that will come, will come. You know the coming of the Lord. Many times when we think about it, we think about the second coming, isn't it? Yes, that is theologically correct. And every student of the Bible, every scholar of the Bible, any reader of the Bible will agree that there is definite promise of his coming again. But what also God does not want us to miss is that in everyday challenges, it is when he comes that every single challenge finds a solution. So what is it, or whatever it is, that is at topmost, you know, point of my desire that I desire of the Lord this morning, I hear him say, saying, he that will come, will come. He will not tarry. Immediately he comes into that situation, that situation finds a solution and resolution. His coming is not just then. He will come then. 
but more of his coming that is relevant to our daily needs is for him to come daily. Now, what we are now going to see, to just look at in the next few minutes, are the steps that the Bible recommends, things that we must do while waiting for him to come. I don't know what you want him to come into. May well be. You've been looking and saying, I want to grow in stature. Well, maybe a young man who wants to, you know, grow taller in height. <laughs> or I want to grow spiritually. I want to know the Lord such that I can feel him. I can see him. I can perceive him. I can touch his reality. Many people say the Lord said, the Lord said. But eventually you wonder, if the Lord said, then why this? There is more of the reality of Christ to touch. There is more of him in his word. We open the word of God and it just opens itself to us. It may well be that it's at home issues. And you feel this deep inside of you that this is the Lord. This is God. This is what we once done. But nobody seems to see it. The person that you even think will be a good counselor, will be somebody, an encourager, says, oh, no, nobody will listen to you. No, nobody will listen to your voice. You are alone in this one. You go to this place, it looks like they say, ah, uh, what you are saying makes sense, but maybe it's only you <laughs> that it makes sense to. This is not possible. This is 2022 for God's sake. But you are convinced that somehow the hand of providence is channeling you. Just say, this is the way. This is the way. Follow it. I will follow you with my eyes. But you say, but Lord, I can't, it's not like desert. There's no, I can't even see any footprint to follow. There is no discernible road. It's just sand. And that thing is saying, no, 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 no. See, go. I want to say that the only footprint that we need to seek is that of Christ. He's the one that leads and says, follow me. I will make you. What I've said to you, I'm able to do. And when I do, I do what no man can do. Where human help ends, that's where my own starts. And maybe it's even in ministry. It may not be in the life, it may not be in home. It may be in ministry. And you are saying, Lord, so in all of this, where is my... I don't really... You, you ask, you say... I'm, I'm not sure I even have passion for anything. But deep inside, there's a hunger to also leave your own footprints on the sands of time. There is as if something God has bundled inside of you, packaged, but it is seeking revelation. It is seeking a release. And you are saying, where is the way? Is when he comes. Now let us look at one passage that I know we will have read before and we will have made a lot of meaning out of it. The Lord will have spoken to us. But today I want us to see something a little bit more perhaps. If we look at Hebrews chapter 10, and we are going to read verses 32. 39. And that, by the way, is the context and the text. The text out of which we'll take the context of our discussions from. Paul was speaking to the Hebrew Christians. I know some of them were, they became a nuisance 
uh, in the Asia Minor, going to places, asking people to obey the law of Moses and all of that. No, but it's not all of them. Some of them were genuine. And those ones, they faced a lot of hardship in serving the Lord. They faced a lot of difficulties. So Paul was writing to these Hebrews, Hebrew believers. He said, call to remembrance the former days. He said, but call to remembrance the former days in which after you have, you were illuminated. You endured a great fight of afflictions. I don't know what meaning that makes to the individual heart. But you see, most of us, when we became Christians, there are a lot of things that we have to sacrifice. A lot of things that we have to let go. There are things that when you look back now and you say, the cost of following Jesus has been significant. Eternal life, the word of God, the glory of Christ that he has given us, they far outweigh whatever we have lost. That is true. And even the eternal weight of glory that awaits us surpasses anything that we could have lost. But it is still true that when Paul said that all he left behind was dung, it was insignificant. He was the youngest member of the Sanhedrin. We don't know what height Paul of Tarsus will have, will have climbed onto if he has pursued that career. He was the foremost scholar in the college of Professor Gamaliel. He was erudite. In, in fact, he said, if it's to do with the law, <laughs> from A to Z of the law, not only did he carry it in his head, but in the practice of it, he was blameless. Now, he left all of that to become somebody that was pursued even from the first day of his conversion from Damascus, ran to Jerusalem. Jerusalem rejected him. He ran out again to Cilicia, where he came from. He ran back into the desert for three years. After that, he presented himself in Jerusalem. Then he went back to Cilicia. Then Barnabas, somehow the work in Antioch grew. They sent Barnabas to go and check out what was going on in Antioch of Syria. He felt, oh, this is great. I need somebody. He went to fetch Paul again, and it was from there that God commissioned him. Then he traveled out. First time out, Salamis, Pephos, they got to uh, Pega and Pamphylia, lighted. First place that they would preach was, well, was actually in Pephos in Cyprus. He was being antagonized by one false man who called himself uh, Elimas or whatever he called himself. By the time they got into Asia Minor proper, first place they preached was Antioch of Pisidia. <laughs> they got there. They invited him to come and preach. And at the end of preaching, they pushed him out. <laughs> they were the ones that said, oh, men and brethren, you have come from uh, Judea and Antioch. Do you have anything to say to the brethren? Come and say it. But by the time he finished saying it, <laughs> he said no and he didn't leave it there from there he went to Iconium they pursued him he ran to Lystra in fact there they never, nearly took his life if you saw him saying oh uh, there was a man caught up by whether in you see you recall that out of body experience won't you I don't know whether it is but he was describing something similar to that that's how he saw heaven <laughs> then they took him to Derby to recuperate they still, he had to escape from there and then run back. They just went to every place they visited, appointed elders, and back to Jerusalem. Now, 
when you look at it physically, oh, the other two journeys were no different. When you look at it in the, you know, in, on the surface, say, how does a man live a life of power and splendor for being stoned from city to city? Now it was that that he was talking about here. So he said, call to remembrance the former days, especially when we started. In the days of those grievous persecutions. After you were illuminated, you saw the light of the gospel. It shined on your hearts. You endured a great fight of affliction. Partly, while you were made gazing stock. You know, it's you and I that understood what Paul was saying in Philippians chapter 3. His brothers, um, and uh, I don't know whether his mother was alive. No mention was. But if he had a mother, do you see what is going on in the mind of that woman? Youngest men member of Senate. Youngest member of the house of the Lord. A lot of future before him. A scholar of no mean stature in the foremost school in Israel, the rabbinical college of Professor Gamaliel. He was himself an assistant professor. He was a leader. Now, <laughs> he's the man of stone. Everywhere is stone. You and I saw it from this, the, the kingdom perspective. That's not how people look at them from outside. They were gazing stock. That what did this to you? Who did this to you? And you know that has been the experience of some of us. They say, this is your Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Are you sure you are? <laughs> you are okay? Eh? All of us are worshiping God now. Eh? It's the same God. Even me like this, it's the same God. But me, I don't take things to like this. You are taking it. Eh? You are married now. Eh, children, are you not thinking? <laughs> you know. Made the gazing stock, both by reproaches and affliction. So that when you now say that, oh, the kind of help that anyone will need. That even if you were in the world, you would still need. He said, eh, eh. <laughs> Jesus will do it now, Abby. We'll be praying. We, in fact, we ourselves, we will pray for you in the name of Jesus. So that he will do it. Sometimes when I see people do that to me, I say, are you people punishing God? What is the crime? in following God. But it's affliction. Even people who claim they understand, they only understand <laughs> in inverted commas. And in fact, he said, you became companions of them that were so used. Now, if one looked at it in um, I think in verse 34, I think in the um, Passion Translation, he said, you sympathized with those in prison. And when all your belongings were confiscated, you accepted that violation with joy. Oh, whatever I'm describing that is contemporary, it was far worse in those days. Just for being a friend of Paul was a crime. in the room of A.D. 50s, A.D. 60-something. It was a crime. People were thrown to the lions just by association. A spy would just say, oh, they are gathering somewhere. And they gather all of them. Even the first-time visitor. <laughs> Who didn't understand what they are talking about? Is when they are in the place where before they throw them to the lions, they'll say, you better give your life to Jesus now. 
This world is already lost. You better grab the one that is to come. But they endured it with what? With joy. They endured it with joy. And the list is this. If you escaped being arrested, then what did they do? They confiscated all your property. So that the person has nowhere to return. Re that was the cost of following Jesus. So when he said, if any man will follow after me, let him deny himself. Carry his cross daily. That cross was a declaration that the world is dead unto me and I am dead unto the world. He said you were convinced that you possess a treasure growing in heaven that could never be taken from you. That is what has kept us. So, so don't lose your bold, courageous faith. Now, in, um, in um, KJV, in authorized version, that's what, if, uh, that's what 35 says, cast not away therefore. And this is where we are now going. All of this, challenges in the home and family, challenges of even personal life, home, marketplace. How do we face them? How does the joy that comes in our spirit when we are here like this. In happiness, worshiping our God, you are sensing his presence. You know he's here. And it's not because somebody is saying, the Lord is here. It's you know, you know, you know yourself. That is here. But then, how does this not just be euphoria of three hours on Sunday? How does it be the same thing throughout Sunday? Waking up in that joy of the Holy Ghost. That sense of accomplishment and achievement. That sense of touching the reality of what we are sacrificing for. On Tuesday, on Wednesday. On Friday, on Saturday. On Sunday, on Monday. Now it says, Cast not away therefore. Because we know that what God has in store for us as Paul actually explained, it carries a weight of glory that makes the, gl the glorious glory of the earth insignificant. The, this earth will fade away and all the glories therein. What we are to live in, the glory of the present is of more reality. That is why we remain. Because we know that even most of these things that we will look at today and say it's affliction, truly, some people don't have Christ and they are still going through it. It's not all those that ex they executed in Rome that were Christians. There were people who just, you know, revolted against Roman Empire. Who didn't like Roman rule. They wanted to fight their way, you know, of to independence. When they were arrested, they carried their people away as slaves in Rome. All their leaders suffered the same fate. Anyway, so these afflictions are not limited to us. Whatever the challenges are, don't let that ever make us to turn our way, eyes away from the glory. The reason is this. Every time affliction comes to us, oh, is an opportunity for the spirit of glory to rest upon us. That's what Peter told people in his first episode. That one we cannot exchange for anything. It says, cast not away therefore your confidence. That's verse 35 which has great recompense of reward. 
Now, I haven't settled that point. Now, what are the steps to having this connection that brings him into the situation? What is it that makes he that will come, come? He wants to come. And he will come. The only reason why things may not work out the way God planned it is if we turn our eyes away from him. So, now let us note this part very carefully. He now says, cast not away therefore. So, the first step is to keep on trusting. Trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Keep trusting. He will come. He made the heavens and the earth. All things that we can look and see, they were made out of nothing. And everything that he has made, he opposed them by the word of his power. Or, in simpler terms, by the power of his word. And that word is a person. That word is God. He was the one that with, was with the Father in the beginning. By him, all things that were made were made. And there was nothing made that was made without him. Is the one. is the miracle we need. When he comes, just as he created in the beginning, he can create out of nothing whatever it is that we need. So he says, don't lose your bold, courageous faith for you are destined, destined for a great reward. Now, what do we now need? If we have resolved that we will not allow our trust in him to be shaken, that he is faithful who promised that he will also bring it to pass. He now said, you have need of patience. Ah. But something should come before patience because he said, after that, you have done the will of God. So let's reverse that. The first thing to do is what? Seek the will of God. Yeah. So that we are not waiting for God, what God is saying. No, that's not what I plan for you. So the first question to ask about whatever is the issue that is, you know, uppermost in my heart this morning to say, Lord, what is your will concerning this? And how do I find this will? The nearest place to find this will is in his word. Just as he said there that cast not away your confidence. Another person, in another, this was Paul writing to Hebrews. John, in his epistle, he said, and we have this confidence in him. That if we pray according to his will, then we have all the petitions that we have required or requested of him. We have this confidence in him. That if we pray according to his will, then we have all our petitions. Now, his will is tied up with his word to us. I have seen many people and each and every one of them I have warned. I met one young man, well, young man then, we were both younger then, but he's younger than I. He left a top university with a PhD in the UK. And 
he has lived his life since I've known him. On prophecies that people gave him and dreams that he had. And I've been counseling with him now for almost two decades. Not almost, actually, it's a bit over two decades. And my insistence is this. Now, all this that you've told me, have you received a word from God from the scripture? And I found out that every time he comes, he, co <laughs> he comes up with something that would support that dream. But which I know that that is not the context. You see, if it is the word of God, now, let's put it, let me put it the other way around. God does speak to us in dreams. He does. And most of us, we know dreams to discard. Like you just have a very busy day, you know, <laughs> running around, and then you find yourself in office overnight. <laughs> Somebody who, you know, was being troublesome before the previous day, you find him again in the dream. Just throw that away. That's out of much business. But some dreams, you know that this one is significant. So how do we know? The point is to first recourse. The first place of recourse is to the word of God. But don't let us look for a word that has no context or that the context doesn't bear on it and say, uh, ah, no. We ask God for a revelation of his word. Ask God directly. Lord, is this you? If so, give me a word. He will. And when that word comes, it will almost jump out. It will leap out of the Bible. And when it just hits your heart, boom, <laughs> you'll know that this is not just me. In fact, it is as one is going through that word that one will remember the dream. Now, there are other ways that God speaks. God also speaks through prophecies, just like the brother I was talking about. But if the prophecy will come, often, the way we see it in the Bible is that that prophecy comes to something God has been saying. It's, it tends to come as a confirmation. And if it comes for the first time from a prophet, then God will use another situation or circumstance to confirm it. And then he will confirm it also with his word. So when I see our young sisters or brothers and they come with this, their vision. <laughs> oh, about Sister Cecilia and all of that. I say, okay. <laughs> say, what did God say? Say, first go, it must, every revelation must first pass the test of the word of God. That's the first test. The second test is the test of prophecy, prophetic confirmation by elders. The third test is must pass is the test of the Holy Spirit. Does the Spirit of God, you know, inside you agree with this? And then also it must pass number four test, the test of time. The test of the word of God, test of prophetic confirmation, test of Holy Spirit. You see, when the Holy Spirit comes in, he brings conviction upon conviction. You just know that this is correct. Uh, you, will, you will just be, you know, anywhere you go, it will be a confirmation. You will go to a place where you didn't know anyone. So <laughs> God will send a true prophet. Who will say, do you know one Cecilia? <laughs> you will say, oh, that is it. And if you even want to pull the leg of the prophet, you say, Cecilia, say, well, I too don't know anything about it, but God is telling me that there is something there you ought to pray to pray. Say, ah, okay, thank you, sir. Say, oh, thank you, Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Co conviction upon conviction. And then give it time. Even at that, do what? Give it time. Time tells. Now, that is the first thing. Now, 
if we have now known the will of God, what do we do now? Be patient with confidence. The Yoruba man will say, Farabale. <laughs> See? It's patience. But there's no point being patient when we don't know the will of God. Because God does not commission a project. He would not pay for a project he didn't commission. And he wouldn't commission a project that is not from him. But if it is him, he will pay all the way. So it says, after that, we have done the will of God. So now, do you see that? He didn't say no only. But do what? Do. Now, for everything that is accomplished in the spirit to be brought to the physical realm, there is something for me to do. Even if it's only to pray about it. Let me do what I know I ought to do to that thing that I know is the will of God. Then with that, I must stay with quiet confidence. Why? It says, you might, that you might receive the promise. You see, promises of God are conditional upon my own cooperation. He will not do anything to me that I do not want. He will not give me something in which direction I'm not looking at. He will not force himself on me because he's not a tyrant. Heavens belongs unto the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. If a man does not call down what God has done, it remains there in the unseen realm. To bring it down to something we can touch and knock, it needs a man. The physical world, God has given man to operate. And he's the one that operates it through the man. Now, when we've done the will of God, then we are patient so that we might receive. But if we have known his will, we have done whatever he wants us to do. Sometimes it may mean relocation. Don't let's be tied down. Whatever he wants to do, what do you do? Do it. Whatever he says to you, do what? Do it. Then we will. I will have them put, we will then receive the promise. But they put might there because it's also conditional upon me. Now, he said for yet a little while. Once God's will is known and done, the time to wait is how long? Very little while. It's a little while. Because if he's not going to do it, yeah, what's, what's the point of it? him announcing it to us? What's the point of saying, okay, do this, if you believe what I'm saying to you? After I've done it, why should he then fold his hands? If I'm still waiting for it, it means that there is something he is doing. So that that thing will come at a perfect time. He said, Yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. So that tarrying is in my own reckoning, isn't it? In his own reckoning, he has never tarried. He does his work at the right moment. And that's what I want us to take to prayer. Whatever that situation is, just tell it to the Lord. With that confidence that he that will come, will come. And he will not tarry. And the just shall live by faith. Let us pray. My righteous ones will live from my faith. Ha, hallelujah. It's not even my own faith. It's his own faith. It's his own faith. The life we live now, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. If righteousness comes by the law, then Christ 
is dead in vain. No, he has not died in vain. And his work will not be vain over me. It will not be vain over you in the name of Jesus. Now the just shall live by faith. You just cry to the Lord this morning. We are not of those that draw back unto perdition. We are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we are certainly not those who hold back by fear. They are held by, by fear. We are among those who have your own faith and we experience true life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, Lord, as your people pour out their heart unto you, let there be an outpouring of grace. Let there be an outpouring of grace. Everything that we have left in the world, we count them as done. Because of the glory that excelleth. Lord, let us enter into it in the name of Jesus. We bear this treasure in our earthen vessels. Oh Lord, please shine the light of your glory through our lives in the name of Jesus. Every promise, please do keep. Because you are a promise keeper. You are a covenant keeper. You are a God of covenant. The one you struck with us, you sealed it with the blood of your son, with the blood of God. It is a covenant that you must keep. It's a covenant you never break. Father, answer the cries of our hearts this morning in the name of Jesus. Let's know of the dew of heaven and the plentifulness of the earth. Sustain us with plenty of corn and with plenty of wine. Now you God of peace, you who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, now through the blood of everlasting covenant, Lord, see your covenant with your people this morning in the name of Jesus. Make them perfect. Through every good work to do your will and receive the promise in the name of Jesus. Walk in them that which is well pleasing to you and well pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. And in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise Amen. ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's appreciate the Lord for the word that we have just received. Amen. Oh, uh, in just in a minute, we're, we're going to pray for Doctor Goke. Um, I, I when when I because I was really, you know, um, I was really ready to receive the word. So I I, I forgot to mention that Doctor Goke didn't come alone. Uh, is here with his lovely wife. Um, well, I was, I was going to say Dr. Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Tony Adejimo. Yeah, let's, let's, let's appreciate the Lord. Thank you so very much, man, for coming. Thank you, man, for coming. Thank you, man. I, I, I want also pray for uh, Dr. Goke um, and, of course, his family and his ministry. 
I want us to ask that the Lord will continue to reveal himself. That that fountain that has been hoping will not be closed. That the freshness that comes from his presence, the presence of the Lord will distill, fall like the dew that falls in the morning. That in the brightness of his light, he will see the path that is ahead of him. It's a gift to the body of Christ and we pray that his place another man will not take. That the Lord will continue to strengthen him and his family, multiply grace to them. That he also will see the fulfillment of the travail of his soul and rejoice before God. That every word proceeding from heaven through him we do internal and eternal work in the heart of those who will hear in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for your word. We receive it as a word from you. And may this word mix with faith in our hearts and do that which you are proposed to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing, Heavenly Father. It is in Jesus' name we have prayed. And as we honor you with our substance and as an expression of our worship to you again this afternoon, we pray that you will receive it and you will establish the work of our hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Uh, once again, let, let's, let's thank God for, for the word. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, that was a clear word from the Lord, a word of encouragement. And I believe that uh, someone is encouraged this morning. Uh, by his grace, you will not cast away your confidence. The will of God will be clearly revealed to us. And the endurance that we need, may the Lord continue to supply in the name of Jesus Christ. So as we give the Lord, you, you know how we, uh, the details will be displayed on the screen. Uh, please um, feel free uh, to, no, no pressure. Uh, but we're, we're going to take one hymn. As I was teaching the hymn that came, uh, to me, uh, I've, I've shared that with uh, Miss Annie. Uh, when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, so we'll take that as we give to the Lord this morning, uh, this afternoon.
Before I do what I have to do, is El please sit down, sorry. Um, can Elder Gabriel come forward for a minute or two? He just needs to share some information regarding our summer church summer picnic 2022. The first one we're having in three years. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I, I love that shot. So we are ready. Praise the Lord. Okay, the, 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 the announcement is this. We need to put down our names. This is for transport. Those who want to go by the church bus on that day, Monday 29th of August, by 10 a.m., that's actually when we gather here, so that the bus can leave on time, because the, venue, the time starts at, uh, at the venue by 10, 10 30 a.m., okay? It's about 20 minutes drive or 25 minutes drive. So please put down your names with the usher and then your phone numbers as well, and try and make sure you make it by 10. First come, first off, as far as your names have been pulled down. We just have only one bus to go, one trip, okay? Praise the Lord. And for some of those of us, some of us who have cars, please try and pass through the church, try to collect some people. Don't go there with one or two spaces left in your car. Please try and pick some people because the people will always come and hang around for you to pick them. But if you want to be a part of that, please try and come on time so that <laughs> you don't miss the, the chance. Praise the Lord. And for those of us who already put our names to give one thing or the other, yeah, yeah, please, if you can bring it today, fine. Otherwise, Sunday will be the last day for us to collect anything from anybody. And I think the list is still going around. If you're interested, just signal by raising your hand, and then your church will give you the paper you put on your name for whatever you want to give to support the program. It's a church program. It's free, but we need to support the church as much as we can. Praise the Lord. Uh, some, 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 some people said to me they prefer to give money. So if, if you can want to give money in support of that, please pay into the church fund, but church account, and the reference it picnic. That will tell so that we know that it's for the picnic. Praise the Lord. Okay, and then just a recap we, we have parking around that place. So go move straight to the parking. Make sure you park and do the property in there so that you don't pay a fine. Then cleanliness is for everybody cleaning that place. And then games come with whatever games that you have. It's definitely a great day. We have a, a children's park around there. So, I mean, the children will have enough time to celebrate. And I pray, but most importantly, please try and, okay, those are the, the stuff. Beautiful. So, please, please try and have uh, the church phone number. That will help you so that you don't miss that place. The postcode, it's important to have it so that the correct postcode, which we'll be showing a couple of weeks now. And I pray the Lord will help us even as we come for that event in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Brian Michael, please come forward as well. Thank you. This me again. Um, last week, when we were giving vouchers or awards to our year 11 is going to college in sixth form, I missed two out. So I'm going to correct myself. Can I have Joshua here, please? Lola. You have Jimmy. Jimmy Yola. So these ones are going to college or six four. And so these are your vouchers. And there's a reward. Sure. As I said last week, this is not a freebie. It's a reminder of who you are, what you represent, and an ambassador. God go with you. We have some special guests with us today. If this is your first time worshiping with us today at Discipleship Centre Portsmouth, we want to say you're very welcome. Please, can you signify by raising your hand if this is your first time today? Praise the Lord, you're very welcome. Can I ask that you stand on your feet as we welcome you specially? We glad to have you worshiping with us in this house of the Lord. We're glad to have you worshiping with us in this house of the Lord. You are welcome to discipleship center where he makes disciples of impeccable sister here on the left she will welcome you to the church let's encourage them as they come forward praise the lord all right um so we're closing now. Please don't, don't, don't forget uh, next week, Monday, just like Elder Gabriel mentioned, uh, you will need to put your names down. Um, I mean, even if you go as a family. Uh, so not, not just the name of the person, uh, one, maybe the, the head of the family. You, you need to put the names of those who are going with you uh, on uh, the 29th of this month. Uh, make sure you do that before you leave this afternoon. And like he mentioned, if you are going there, you're driving there, and you know that it's just you or maybe two people following you, and you have space, please don't go there with empty space uh, in your car. Please come here before 10 o'clock, may maybe half past nine, uh, so, so, so that we can uh, put people in your car uh, uh, for, 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 for the trip there. God bless you. Uh, and also, our monthly uh, prayer chain, uh, if you haven't booked your own one-hour slot, uh, please make sure you do so uh, after the service today. God bless you. Please, let's rise. Please, let's rise. We're going to take our closing hymn. Um, through the love of Christ, our Savior, all will be well. Hallelujah. Choir, are you ready? Are you coming here or you're staying
pray to close the meeting. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Let us pray, brethren. Oh, Father, thank you. We are so grateful. You have come among us today, right from the very beginning, oh Lord, even up until now. Thank you because we know that all is well. All will be well, all is well, and all must be well. Lord, we will continue to put our trust in you. We will not cast away our confidence because we know that he who will come will come and he will not tarry. Lord, continue to go with us as we go. Please, Heavenly Father, I know you have met us today. Lord, please continue to keep us in your bubble in the name of Jesus. Thank you for our children. We are so grateful. Lord, to see the ones that are going to college to be ambassadors of Christ there, uphold them, we pray. We give you praise for our babies that were dedicated today. Lord, surround them with your presence. Thank you for our pastor and pastor missus. Lord, continue to uphold them. Thank you for all our brothers and sisters. All must be well. And we are grateful, Lord. Thank you again and again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Auntie Tony. Thank you. All right. The goodness together. Of our Lord. Amen. Surely the Lord's goodness and mercy. Forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you and have a great week in Jesus' name.